Hi, welcome back to Arts and Crafts with Miss Vicki. Our Bible study today has some food involved in it, so I thought it would be fun to make some food in my kitchen. One thing that I really like to make are biscuits, and so I'm going to show you how to make Miss Vicki's biscuits today. The first thing we want to do is we're going to go over to our oven and we're going to preheat it to 400 degrees. Come on with me. We're going to hit bake up that temperature until it gets to 400. Hit start. There we go. Now we want to prepare our pan. The very first thing we're going to do to prepare your pan, you need to put some sort of oil on it. And what I like to use, I like to use butter. So I'm going to take a little bit of my butter, put it on my pan, take my paper towel, and I'm going to rub it all over. The nice thing about putting some sort of oil on the bottom of your pan is it makes your biscuits crispy on the bottom, and I like crispy bottoms on my biscuits. The butter just gives it a really nice flavor. If you don't have butter, you can use shortening or you can use any kind of oil just to get a nice little layer right there on your pan. Our recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. You see that right here? three quarters of a cup of buttermilk, but I don't have any buttermilk. And so I'm going to make sour milk. When you make sour milk, you take your milk and you put vinegar in it and it sours up that milk and it makes some really good biscuits. So what I'm gonna do is, this is three quarters of a cup. And so if I needed one teaspoon of vinegar for a cup, for my three quarters of a cup, I need three quarters of a cup of my um, vinegar, excuse me, three quarters of a teaspoon of my vinegar. So I'm gonna use my half and my quarter because a half and a quarter, if you add them together, they equal three quarters. Did you guys know that? You do now. All right, so I'm gonna put the half a teaspoon of vinegar in my milk. So I'm going to put a quarter of a teaspoon in also. There we go. And then we're just going to let that set because as it sets, that milk will, will, um, will kind of get, get uh, little clumps in it. All right. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure out our flour. Our recipe calls for two cups of flour. So flour, if you look at it, it's really lightweight, isn't it? It's like a powder. And if you just go and you scoop your cup into there, you're going to get too much because it's going to pack down in. So I like to loosen it up with my spoon and then start to measure. And just scoop it in like this. That way I don't get too much. And then I level it off. And that's one cup. Again, for the second cup, do the same thing. We go spooning it in until it overflows. There we go. And then I'm going to level it off. All right. Two cups of flour. The next thing we need is baking powder, and we need two and a half teaspoons. I'm going to take my one teaspoon. And this is powdery too, and you can level it off right here on the edge. There we go. Two, and then I need a half. And so I have my half cup teaspoon that I used for the vinegar. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. Dry it off. And I need one half. There we go, two and a half. The next thing, let's look at our recipe. We need salt. We need a quarter teaspoon of salt. So here's my, where's my quarter? Oh, here's my quarter. I used it for my vinegar, so I need to clean it off again, dry it up. There we 
we go. Pour the salt in. Our oven's done. That's nice. Level it off. And pour it in. And then we need baking soda. Now I keep my baking soda in a dish like this. It says baking soda on it. And it calls for a half a teaspoon. Here's my half teaspoon. Put it in. Level it off. There we go. The last dry ingredient that we have in our recipe is a tablespoon, that's one of these big ones, of sugar. So I'm going to take a tablespoon of sugar, level it off, and pour it in. And we're going to stir that all up together, all those dry ingredients, you need them stirred up real good. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take you look at your recipe and it calls for one cup of butter or shortening. You can use either one, but I prefer to use shortening because it makes your biscuits a little bit flakier, not quite so dense. Butter will make it dense even though it has a really good flavor with that butter in it. So now I'm going to measure just a little bit at a time because it's real easy to get air bubbles when you're measuring butter or shortening. So just a little bit at a time. There we go. A little bit more, a little bit more to overflow. I always like to overflow and then level it off. I got that nice straight edge right there. That's just one full third of a cup of shortening. Throw it in. All right, the next thing that we're gonna need to do is cut, actually cut with a knife, the shortening into those dry ingredients. So I'm gonna go like this and go back and forth with my knives and cut that shortening in. Keep on turning it and cutting it turning it and cutting it, mixing it all in with all of that dry ingredients. This takes a while. So what have you guys been doing since you've had to be at home? I have been taking walks once a day and I ride my bike in the evening. I really enjoy that. Do you guys go on walks? Or do you take bike rides with your family? I see lots of families around my neighborhood going on bike rides. It looks like a lot of fun. There we go. Keep on cutting it in. You might say, Miss Vicki, how long do I have to cut this? Well, you want your shortening to be in little pea size pieces. This probably takes two or three minutes to cut this in. I say, oh, Miss Vicki, my arms are getting tired. That's okay. Just keep going. And pretty soon you'll see that your shortening is in little pea-sized pieces. There we go. You go like that and bring it up. Sometimes it brings those larger pieces up. That looks pretty good to me. What do you think? I'll show you what you want. Look at this. You see those pea size? This is a little bit more than a pea size, but that's okay. Should be about the size of a pea. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that sour milk that we made not too long ago. Make sure this is... And we are going to pour the milk in. There we go. Now this is where you have to be really gentle with your, with your dough. You don't want to work it too much or else your biscuits will be tough. When my brother was a teenager, he was older than me. My mom went to work and so my brother was left to start dinner. And when he started making biscuits, his biscuits were horrible. They were hard as rocks. They had a good flavor, but boy, they were hard to eat. He eventually got to the point where he could make pretty good biscuits. So here we go. It's, it's, it's put together. It's been done gently. 
I'm going to take some flour. I'm going to put it on my cutting board. We put the flour on so it doesn't stick. There we go. Then I'm going to take our dough, pour it in, just like that. Okay. I'm going to take some of the flour and I'm going to put it on my hands so it, the dough doesn't stick to my hands. We're going to start working it together. Working it together, flipping it over, working it together. When you flip it like this, you don't want to flip it too many times, but this is going to help create uh, layers in our biscuits, and those layers are really, really good. All right, here we go. So this recipe will make about nine. If you have a round cutter, you can use the round cutter, but if you don't, this is what you do. Flatten it out, flatten it out till it's about an inch, and then square it up. Make it look like a square. Okay. There we go. That looks like a square. I like the looks of that, don't you? Yeah. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do, let me clean off my hands just a little is we're gonna make nine biscuits out of that square. If you take three times three, you are going to get nine. So we're gonna make three rows this way and three rows this way, and it's gonna give us our nine biscuits. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna take my knife, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut about a third, about one third of the way. And then all I have to do with the next one is just cut it in half. That's about in half. There we go. Make sure it's cut all the way through. And then I'm gonna do the same thing the other direction. Go about one third, doesn't have to be perfect. Just the best you can do. And then about halfway on these. And voila, Miss Vicki has biscuits. So now we're gonna take our biscuits and we're gonna put them on our prepared dish. Okay, as you can see, they're not all exactly the same size, but they're close. Good enough for me. There we go. And last row. One, two, and three. I heard my oven ding not too long ago. My oven is warm, and these biscuits are ready to go in. Now the recipe says to bake them for 15 to 20 minutes. In my oven, 15 minutes is just right. I don't want them any darker than that. So I'm gonna put my biscuits on for 15 minutes what I suggest that you do, if this is the first time that you have made them, put them on for 15 minutes, then look at them. If they're too pale, then put them on for another minute or two and then check them again. I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes. There we go. I made these biscuits earlier today. They look pretty good, don't they? And look, see how flaky they are? That's because I didn't work them too much and I folded them like I showed you and I used shortening. Shortening will give that flaky look. Look at the bottom, because I put the bottom, the butter on the bottom, they're hard. And they'll be crunchy and they'll be good and flavorful. So I'm gonna take my biscuit, I'm gonna open it up, put a little butter on it, and I like jelly on mine. Uh, so I'm gonna get a little jelly. Yum. I love biscuits. I make biscuits a lot when my family's gonna come over. And then if there's any leftovers, they take them home with them. There we go. See if they're any good. Mmm. Crunchy. Mmm. Full of flavor. Mm. Just the way I like them. All right. I hope you make biscuits for your family. 
Um, if you do make them, be sure that you uh, post a picture of them on this website so I can see what kind of work you're doing. I hope that you enjoy the lesson. We're going to hold up the recipe so you can see. Two cups of flour, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, quarter teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of baking soda, one tablespoon of sugar, one third cup butter for shortening, three quarters of a cup of buttermilk or that handy dandy sour milk we made. Bake it at 400 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. I hope you have fun with this. Be sure that you ask your moms if you can use her kitchen and use her oven before you start this project. I love you. Talk to you later. Bye.